Great. Well, welcome everyone. We're very happy to have you all join us in this job hunting for new graduates, how to get started. Uh, we will be talking about uh, strategies to launch your job search, um, but before anyone can launch their job search, uh, we, we need to uh, look at a couple of things. So, um, so let's move forward um, in our slides. Um, okay, first thing first, uh, you're graduating in an unprecedented economy and you all know that. Um, there are challenges ahead, you're experiencing them already if you have begun your job search. Um, the last few months we've all experienced um, enormous uh, upheaval and changes and hopefully you are all well and I, I wish your families and you the best and I hope um, everyone who um, who is uh, who has graduated has adjusted to the best of your ability and and are healthy enough to uh, begin to move um, your job search forward. It is all about the mindset and getting started with any job search is uh, getting your wrapping your mind around what needs to be done and um, how to get yourself in gear. Um, having the stamina, stamina and the energy to begin to launch this kind of search in any economy is a challenge. So you have to recognize that it does take, uh, it does take energy and it does take uh, good um, motivation and good health. Um, you've been in this virtual world for some time, uh, whether it was finishing classes or beginning to refine your own marketing materials, whether that's your resume or your artist statement or uh, finally getting on LinkedIn. Um, but also I know you've been involved and we've all been involved uh, because we had nothing else uh, be, beyond, beyond the virtual world to be involved with is um, entertainment and there's exercise and there's meditation apps and there's all sorts of things that, that you've had to engage with in order to keep your sanity and keep yourself motivated and be entertained and, and hopefully not be um, alone in your um, experience. Um, eating healthy, exercising, whatever works for you, that's really important to keep that going. Uh, also creating a routine. When you're job searching, you, um, it's always been said that when you're job searching, you should act as if it's your job to job search. So whatever you can do to get yourself motivated, whether that's dressing for work or just stepping it up a little bit, uh, you can, you know, whether that's just the top half because you have, you're going to be um, interviewing virtually, uh, you still need to, um, to take care of yourself so you'll feel more motivated. Um, take, take control with whatever you're able to take control of. If it means um, shutting the news, which is extremely stressful um, on so many levels, um, that's something that I've needed to do. Um, at, and. Uh, sometimes just so I can get through my day um, because there's a lot going on. Um, and also do things for yourself. You're likely a creative person and you need to revive your interests if you need, if you need to, to help you get through um, your next steps. So let's think about um, preparing for the job market entry or re-entry. Uh, really you have to begin where you are. So if you're a graduating senior seeking your first job, that's your status, recognize what your status is. If you've had job loss uh, from a recent hire, which is devastating, it's, it's hard enough in this, in, during this pandemic uh, to, um, to worry about your health and worry about your family. But if you were excited that you had a job offer and then you unfortunately lost it, that's happened to several students. You may know uh, some friends who that's happened to if it hasn't happened to you. We'll, we'll hear from you um, in a little while. And I'm so sorry that that happened to you. And, and you know, certainly we are, we recognize the, the pain of the, the challenges of uh, looking for a job to begin with. But during this time, we recognize that you have to mourn the loss too. You have to, you have to recognize, okay, I'm the class of 2020. I'm going to do the best I can, but I have to know that this is, is going to be a challenge. It's not impossible. Um, I've certainly been in this field long enough to see ebbs and flows of economies. Uh, and this is the, the most difficult one that I've seen on, on many levels, but 
Um, but all the professionals in the field, all of the other uh, national career development leaders and people in the field and the workforce uh, development all believe that there are things that you can do during this time that will help prepare you for when the job market gets better and be ready for openings when they do come up that work for you. So you need to conduct a, a needs assessment. Uh, determine what your immediate or urgent needs are. Maybe you have to work no matter what, you don't care what it is, you just have to make money, what kind of jobs are available. We, we'll talk about that and we'll give you some good resources for places that actually have openings. Um, regaining or gaining focus for the first time to be able to adjust your goals. You may have had a goal in mind before you graduated and you've been looking before you graduated. Now you're gonna to have to shift a little bit and think about, okay, more immediately, what do I need to do? I can put uh, some of my immediate goals, I mean, some of my long-term goals on the back burner, uh, have some patience and work through this so I can get myself prepared for when those opportunities come up. Um, Knowing yourself, what are your skills? What are your skill sets? What are your competencies? Uh, evaluating your current interests as they are now and your work values. You know, the things that you are, that you find are really important. Well, you have to make money. You have to make a certain amount, perhaps, if you are independent. If you're not independent and you're able to um, not have to pay uh, too much rent at this point, or, or um, I'm sure many of you have bills to have to pay, you need to look at, okay, well, that's why I may need to get this kind of job for now until I end do my art while I'm um, preparing myself to find those other opportunities or be able to then better um, share my, my work and um, build my own business. Um, assessing those current skills and identifying those things that you wish to learn. Sometimes it's a good time to begin to see, well, how can I prepare for re-entry to the job market? Maybe there are skills that I haven't developed and I'd like to develop. Maybe I am, um, I'm, look, I've been interested in the public relations field, but I never got design skills and I really wanted to have some graphic design skills so I can use them in social media marketing or something. Um, this could be a good time to start developing some of those skills. Starting the search, uh, being proactive. This is what we have to do. You may find that, oh, I'm just too depressed, I can't, there's too much stress going on, I need to take the day off. Um, I can't think about uh, job searching right now. Then take the day off because there's nothing harder than uh, forcing yourself to be motivated when you're not feeling well. Just don't take too much time to, to give, your, give yourself the time, but then come back into, okay, today, you know what, I'm just gonna work on building my LinkedIn, LinkedIn profile, um, getting that done. Then I'll feel better, I accomplish something, and then I'm gonna chill out for a little bit. So take it in increments, do what's manageable. The good news is that there are jobs out there. They may not be the dream job, but there are job openings. You might need to be ready and think about, well, what should I apply for maybe that I already have skills in, but I really didn't want to do, but maybe I can continue to polish my skills in sales or customer service, or maybe I have really good um, uh, data entry skills or, or Excel uh, skills, or I know some data analytics and I guess I could help uh, a company with that, or I could take a freelance uh, job that maybe is not exactly what I want. I'm, I am a um, painter, but there is a couple of design or illustration type freelance opportunities that maybe I could take in the meantime, do whatever you can to strengthen your skills and then, uh, and then keep yourself fresh so when those other opportunities come up, you'll be ready. Um, job searchers need to demonstrate resiliency. Uh, you can fill a need of an organization. If there's a place that you always wanted to work and you see that there is a need, think about how you can fill that need. See if you can connect with folks in that particular company, maybe from um, alumni networking, we'll talk about that and how important working your network is more than ever before in this kind of economic climate. Uh, 
take a seat, we say, you know, well, you know what, take a seat, take a job. It may just be, I'm just going to take this for money because I know how to do this and, and I'm going to do this for a little while. And this is kind of like my in the meantime job until something better comes along. That is something that you want to consider. You are a creative person. There's no question in my mind that the, the folks in this audience are creative because they graduated from purchase and you use your creativity in a variety of different ways. Well, now it's time to think out of the box and think, okay, I've got to be practical, but what can I do personally? It may not be to start up my own company, but it might be that I can continue to do things on the side um, or do my art or find performances in a virtual way that I maybe hadn't thought about before. Um, but think about the industry that you're interested in and see if maybe there's a way that you can get your foot in the door in some non-traditional way. Um, and we'll talk about some of those other strategies uh, in, in a bit. Doesn't mean that you can't have your dream. It just may be that it's postponed temporarily, but you can do things to build toward your dream. Uh, these are some good re uh, resources that we um, know exist uh, that we've posted on our website. Um, and I don't know if I can, I could try to share it, but I don't wanna, I, I think you might be better off because I, I'm a little tentative with the um, multi-screen sharing and I don't wanna open it up and not get back to where I'm supposed to, unless Jeff wants to, but I think I'm gonna just tell you. Um, this first link here, Current Job Opportunities and Resources. This link leads you, this is on our Career um, Center homepage. Uh, maybe we'll just show it to you later when we move to an, another um, slide before we close today. But, um, but there's listed on this page are open opportunities that we've heard about from uh, in, in New York, in the New York, New Jersey metropolitan area in Connecticut um, that are openings we've heard from places like hospitals, like um, uh, some retail, like, you know, like Target or, or the Walmarts of the world, um, places, grocery stores, of course, these are places that we know have openings now because they desperately need help. But there's also other kinds of opportunities that, you know, hospitals and healthcare, let's say, well, this industry is really hurting for staff. Now, you may have not had any interest in working in a hospital before, but if you are a designer and you can help in the, um, in the department, the communications department of a hospital or public relations, you can use your design or social media marketing skills in, the hos in a hospital or a health related organization or mental health related, all which have a lot of growth right now, they're looking for people in general besides your, your direct service people like doctors and nurses and therapists and so on. So keep an open mind as to the industry that maybe you hadn't thought about, but what do they want? They would want people who are good writers or good people who can um, work with the media. Um, maybe it, it's somebody who's looking to help with a, um, a public service of video or film that you see those all over the place now. So you're a filmmaker and maybe um, you could help with a, a someone who is interested, who's either doing public service, working for um, a, a nonprofit film company or an independent film company and they're, they're doing uh, a piece on something that's relevant today and certainly re relevant um, beyond the, um, the pandemic. Uh, keep an eye on those kinds of things. So when you go into this link, you'll see a whole bunch of different kinds of openings. Um, you may see patient advocate, you may see um, the people in the hospitality or travel industry, well, they could be doing those, uh, some of those tasks in, um, in health related or nonprofit um, or hospitals uh, where they are hiring. The other thing you can use too from our website is the second one. The Career Center website has majors and careers um, resources. So if you go to your major, let's say your arts management, and you go in there and you can actually see, um, you can see a variety of different industry job sites that are helpful to look at that would help you expand your search beyond purchase job score and beyond Indeed and the places that are more traditional where you might be looking for work. 
Uh, these other ones are very good too. New York Hire now, that's all New York area, um, both um, here in the Westchester area as well as anywhere in the city. Um, that's a good one to look at. Uh, the tracing, contact tracing initiative is going on now. They are still hiring. I know they've hired thousands already, but if you have any interest there, um, you can look at the description and see if it, it suits you. Uh, Candor is really good because it'll tell you who's hiring and who has hiring freezes. Um, the Muse is another good one for companies still hiring. And then more traditional ones like Forbes, uh, Handshake. Um, although we are a simplicity school and we have purchased job score, we do have access to a lot of the jobs that are on Handshake. So you can look at that as well. Um, Indeed, of course, is, is a great resource as well. You know, um, normally, yeah, we will be sure. I'm looking at the chat to see if anybody has any questions. This is really weird for me, guys. I wish I could see your faces. Um, I, that's just, you know, this, it's just very weird to be speaking in my office. Um, I'm the only one here now and I miss seeing you all. So I can't um, answer questions as we're going along, but we will we'll definitely interact with you once we um, get through our um, presentation. Skill building. Get yourself more marketable. Do, there's all sorts of opportunities for uh, learning new things, of heightening your abilities and your competencies. Think if there are gaps in your skill set. When you read job descriptions and if you don't think that you have the right technical skills or the experience and you want to know, well, what can I do in the meantime to gather some of that experience? Well, it might be taking some, um, some free courses that Jeff is going to talk about in just a minute. Um, know the skills and competencies you wish to develop or learn. Um, it's really important that you distinguish yourself in this competitive marketplace because you will be competing with some people who have been um, laid off and they have a lot more experience than you do. Now, the good news, and this I know from previous um, down job markets, the good news is you, I know this is kind of a, a weird thing to say, but um, you will be less expensive for a company to hire if you have the skills um, to, that meet certain job requirements rather than someone who has a lot of years experience. Not that you don't want them to get a job too, of course you do, but um, you may have an edge there is what I'm saying. So you just want to make sure that you, you prepare yourself with, with um, any of the new competencies or refine the strengths that you already have. Uh, you can do something like taking micro-credentialing courses. Um, Jeff's going to be talking about that. But basically that's learning about maybe uh, getting better at public speaking or data analytics or um, social media marketing or writing press releases or uh, creating some samples of your work that you could use when you're marketing yourself. Um, because we talk about marketing and branding, well, part of that is, uh, or the big part of that is refining the materials that you have that presents who you are and presents your skills. And that's your resume, that's your cover letters or your artist statement, um, that's your LinkedIn profile. Plus it's all of your other materials and samples uh, that you have that you can use when you're marketing yourself for certain kinds of jobs. So seeking out resources for skill development and training, creating samples of your work, using that new skill is really important. Uh, okay. Um, so here are some key things when you're preparing your search. Okay. You are going to get all these slides. So I know it's a lot of information in a short period of time, but um, bear with us and, and you'll have a lot of good concrete things to do when, um, when you leave this uh, webinar today. So recognize how your personal brand aligns with the target industries or job titles. When you're on purchase job score, let's say, and you see a job description and it sounds terrific, but, um, and you have some of the skills, maybe you don't have as much experience as they're saying, maybe they want um, five, three to five years experience and you have almost three years combining your internship experience, you know what? You can apply anyway because you never know. Um, prepare yourself with the skills, uh, but you should feel comfortable or just think about trying to apply for jobs that you're a little bit less than qualified 
um, or become more qualified during this interim period. So see if your brand or your um, experience aligns with some of the industries or job titles that you see when you look at these job descriptions. Craft high quality career materials. So your resumes, your cover letters, your pitch letters, your emails that you're reaching out if you're reaching out to alumni or maybe to um, a contact, a friend or a parent's friend or a, um, a relative who has uh, somebody they know in a particular field. Uh, you want to make sure that your resume speaks to those opportunities. It's okay to have a few resumes um, beyond your one resume. You may have your arts resume, you might have a general resume, but you may tweak your resume depending on who you're writing to. We do that with cover letters. Well, you can do that with resumes too. As a matter of fact, you should do that with your resume a little bit, tweak it here and there depending on who you're sending that resume out to. Create a personalized keyword rich LinkedIn profile where will you appear in more employer searches. And that's really important that you emphasize the skills that you know for the area that you're interested in. That's why you, it's important to know yourself. Um, what are those, oops, shoot. Well, what are those um, keywords? I'm gonna escape and come back to it. Whoops, okay. Uh, from current slide, there we go. Um, what are those um, skills, keyword rich skills that uh, would demonstrate that you've done or you have knowledge of the industry that you're, you're targeting. So that's something to think about. That's why that research before you even get started sending out resumes to, to jobs is make sure you know who you're sending it out, who you're speaking to. Devising a job search strategy to connect with leadership and access to the hidden job market. When it comes to job searching, it's not all about the jobs that are open, especially in a job market like this. It's determining what is the hidden job market because you may not know what companies are ready to hire again. It's gonna take some time for some of these firms to look at, at their staff and look at who they can bring back and who they still need to hire. Many of the companies who have offered positions to graduating seniors who have had to retract their position may end up opening up their jobs again um, or hiring, deciding, okay, you know what, we can bring back these students or these graduates. So you have to have, the, there has to be some time uh, that once, once places open up again that they can reassess. So think about how you're going to reach out to the different kinds of organizations um, to tap that hidden job market and those are the jobs that you just don't know if they have openings but you've done your research and you're going to pitch yourself sometimes to those organizations that may or may not have opportunities that's something that career counselors can brainstorm with you and help you with um, and that's just so you know uh, we'll talk about it in a bit but we um, are seeing students individually. You can Zoom, uh, have Zoom drop-in hours with us. We used to call them walk-in hours when you come into the office, but you can do that um, and we can give you some tips. We also can have good half hour, 45 minute uh, career coaching sessions to help you develop your own job search strategy and find what that hidden job market is to you, um, including networking. So being able to network with alumni, with maybe mentors you've had previously, maybe with former supervisors and um, other professionals. Networking is so important during this period of time because that's how you get your inside information and your access to what, what is that hidden job market? Are people opening up? Is there any expansion in this business during this economy? Maybe there is and maybe you just don't know about it. And the more you talk to alumni, the further um, you'll be ahead in, of the game when you're um, beginning your job search. So as I said, help is available. Take advantage of the support. It's all here for you. We're not going anywhere. Um, I wish we would all be here in the office because it's quite lonely. Um, actually, I come in here so I can look at my screens and I can be more efficient, but um, but we will welcome you back when, when uh, we're able to reopen. In the meantime, we will welcome you into our homes where we are um, 
all of our counselors are, are working and I'm happy to chat with you. All right. Um, just, just a little yes, reprieve in the midst of chaos, there is also opportunity. Okay. Jeff, you're still there. Yes. Take all it right. away. Thank you. Just want to see if the remote control will work. I clicked on the next slide. There we go. Okay, hi everyone. So I'm gonna be talking to you about building these new competencies and skills that Wendy mentioned previously. So continuing education, lifelong learning. I know that most of you are pretty much done with your education at this point. So maybe hearing that you have to learn more is not the most exciting, but I can tell you there are plenty of ways to continue your education, develop these new skills. And the first one we can talk about is micro-credentials for specialty areas. So these are things that you can put on as like certifications of sorts on either your resume, your CV, your LinkedIn, or any other form of your, let's say online marketing to say, I have a certification in XYZ. And that way people know that maybe it's not just a working knowledge you have, but you actually do have advanced training that can be very marketable. In addition to that, we have free online training. There's so much going around. I would say just keep an eye on it. Um, take a look at what resources we provide. There are professional associations that also have best practices, webinars, things like that. The idea is that you don't want to stay stagnant and you don't just want to wait necessarily for uh, opportunities to come. If during this time you can make yourself even more marketable, even more viable as a candidate, that's only going to do you favors rather than just kind of sitting where you currently are. The kind of addition to that are podcasts, TED Talks. Some of these can certainly be informative. Some of them also mix uh, a little bit with entertaining. So you can learn something and enjoy what you're seeing. But the most important thing, again, is that you're learning who is successful, why are they successful in your industry, what are some of the names of people who are doing big things, so to speak. And that way, you can either try and connect with them or at least mimic their success in your own way by following what they did and what works. Uh, reading key books and resources in your field, similar idea. Um, so some of you may have technical skills such as Excel, Adobe Creative Cloud. Uh, the idea here is that you don't want to get rusty. Some of you may have taken these courses previously, maybe like sophomore, junior year. It's been some time. And even though you currently have that skill, uh, you could perhaps either learn a new technique or strategy to do something advanced, or even to cut down the time to do something you've normally done in, let's say, like half an hour to 15 minutes. Again, to be more successful, to be more skillful, more efficient. And some of you may actually be considering to continue your education, graduate school, or any post-secondary degree uh, to make yourself more marketable, to reach certain career titles that may otherwise not be available to you with just an undergrad degree. So if you're ever curious about that, please connect with us. We do work with students to help them with their application process and package. So please feel free to access our resources on that. In addition, experiential learning, which honestly is one of my favorite things, um, is really about using this time to gain experience. So we have, for starters, gaining postgraduate internship for experience. So in other words, um, right now, recent graduates or soon to be graduates, um, you don't want to just kind of sit and wait and see what opens up. Try and reach out to these organizations and see if maybe they don't have the capabilities or resources to take on a new part-time or full-time employee, but there probably is safe to say that they do need help. So they can maybe do like an internship, a paid internship with a stipend as opposed to like a salary at this point in the game. But even so, you're getting relevant experience you're making new connections, and that really will do you favors as well. There's volunteer and service learning, depending on the industry you want to go to. Some of these can be transferable. Some of them speak to your character, um, what is important to you, your values. So if you want to work for a nonprofit someday, this is a great time to volunteer and say, you know, I'm very involved in my community. I want to make a difference and give back. And you can show that based on what you're doing currently. Uh, gigs and freelancing, these are ways to make money some of these can certainly be industry relevant if you're a writer, for example, and that way you're able to practice, develop your online sample to show employers, and at the same time, write and get paid for it and do other jobs that have to do with uh, freelancing, such as being an artist. Uh, remote work as well. I'm sure most of you are somewhat ac accustomed to that now, hopefully. Uh, the idea is that there's so many things you can do from your living room or wherever you are set up at home. And that way you're either getting paid, learning a new skill, and being engaged with employers. And essential jobs that may be unrelated to your field, 
as Wendy mentioned previously um, and candidly put, sometimes you do have to take the other options to either put food on the table or to you know save up some money to perhaps go to another state another country whatever your plans are sometimes you have to prioritize the immediate and get yourself situated and then you can work towards your goals all right i'm going to go to the next slide can you to click. There we go. Um, skill development and micro credentialing. So this is a little bit more about that. As Wendy alluded to also previously, these are links that you can certainly take. Most of them are pretty much free. I think all of them are actually. Um, and that way you can say, for example, that you took a course from Harvard um, in whatever course material they're teaching. So the idea there is that not only are you learning a new skill, but also you can even kind of name drop in a sense. Uh, Coursera, they have a bunch of free courses. Uh, this one certainly may have been updated in terms of the new courses they offer. Uh, we have Open Yale courses as well. They even have things such as the science of well-being. So as Wendy mentioned previously with self-care, um, it's a very important thing, especially right now. So feel free to sign up for these courses, learn a new skill, and you could even say you've taken a Yale course, which is technically true. Um, and then- Can I just jump in on that one? Too, Go for it. Jeff? Um, yeah, and you know, I think these are really, that this is a very cool thing, I have to say, that if, if I was, in the job, I mean, I, I actually was going to look for myself to see if there's anything that, that I wanted to take. I mean, I'm fortunate to be to be working now, but um, but um, but there there to have access to these free courses, I think is is really terrific. Once you do take something, maybe it's micro credentialing, maybe it's a, a couple of week class, and you can get some kind of badge or or certification or something, and you can put that on your LinkedIn profile. That work LinkedIn profile is a, is a work in, it's a um, living document. So you can always update and, and polish up your branding and marketing after you take these classes. Some some of these kinds of programs and classes. Exactly. And that segues perfectly to the next one, which is actually LinkedIn Learning. So it's also based on lynda.com, but the idea is that you are able to continue to develop and grow your skills in any subject area that they offer. So I believe they have one, for example, for the Microsoft Suite. So if you want to get better at Excel, you can certainly take that. And they are somewhat fee-based. Some of them have like a month free trial, but taking a month of Excel will help you to gain whatever they teach you at that point. And then you don't necessarily have to pay, you drop the class, but you got what you needed. And also we added that you can check if your local library system offers this for free. Sometimes there's a partnership that you can uh, inquire about. And also for for our students and maybe also for recent students because um, it is staff and faculty as well you can apply for a Westchester library system card uh, regardless of wherever you live to be able to access this let's say maybe uh, you're out of state or whatever the case may be you should be able to apply and that will help you out as well okay I'm gonna go to the next one do you want me to do it um, let me there you go Perfect. So just in case if you may not have caught our previous events for resume building, and we do have it posted on our YouTube channel, you can always check that out. The idea is that you are going to create different customized versions of that resume. So you have perhaps one that's more for a traditional part-time job, perhaps one for the arts, if you're a performing artist, if you're into film, whatever the case may be, but those are certainly going to be separate and tailored to employers in that industry. Um, you can also, of course, as I mentioned, modify it for different career paths and pursuits. So right now, if you're taking kind of that backseat and seeing what job you can get in the immediate, and then also work on your resume as you start to develop your networking to send out to somebody that can say, okay, you know, I think I have someone um, that needs a new graphic artist. Let me take a look at what you have and I'll send it to them. So you never want to sleep on either of those types of resumes. Always have them ready just in case. Um, so keywords from multiple, from your research of various job postings. The idea is that think of it like hashtags for your social media. Things trend, these are patterns in the industry. There's certain lingo that can be more accessible or marketable. If you know what these are, these show essentially your background knowledge and the fact that you will come out in more searches than if you don't have these. Um, be sure you're including projects, leadership, professional development, all of these wonderful things that you may be currently a part of. But the truth is, is if you don't um, brand it or add it to your marketing, we won't ever know. 
<laughs> so the idea is that if you're doing something great, by all means, own it, take accountability, put it on your marketing package, and that way employers can know what you're a part of currently. Uh, customizing your categories and headings to fit your experience. Sometimes you may want to bundle it up in terms of internship experience or design experience. Whatever suits your needs for that job application, keep in mind that it can be very fluid. It doesn't just have to be work other or work internship, work volunteer. There's so many ways to play around with that. If you're ever unsure, you can always come speak to us as well. Uh, focus on your output, results of your work, instead of just your input. This is something I often find when working with students. I'll give you an example. Um, so let's say if I were a janitor, right? I could say on a bullet point, took out the trash. So, you know, I took out the trash. But another way of wording that a bit more professional is that I ensured a sanitary work environment through waste disposal. I can promise you they're probably the same thing in practice, but certainly the second one sounds a bit more professional and creative. So especially for your artists or creative thinkers, feel free to take the liberty to expand, um, include the outputs or the results of your contribution. And that way employers can also see that you get the bigger picture in a sense. And quantify when you can, show results. So if you created or helped with the marketing campaign and um, it's brought like a thousand new, new uh, visitors to a website, that's fantastic. That's an accomplishment and achievement that you can certainly put on and is tangible. All right, so I'll go to the next one. There we go. Uh, so building your network on LinkedIn. Uh, I hope most, if not all of you, do have a LinkedIn account. If you don't, there's never a too late time to start. We also have a workshop. Uh, it's this one at the bottom called Maximize uh, LinkedIn. It's a wonderful presentation and I highly do recommend it in case you're new to LinkedIn or haven't even started yet. It could be a wonderful resource for you. The idea here is that your LinkedIn profile is kind of like your online presence. Think of it this way. If I have a job and you apply to it, I'm probably going to look up your name or to see what you're involved in. It'll even send me to your LinkedIn. So whatever comes up if you have your name out there in the internet, you wanna make sure it's professional and it highlights you in a positive way, right? So having a LinkedIn account is a great way to do that and build your online presence and marketability. Uh, reviewing your current profile to see what can be added or improved. If you had one, let's say that you started last semester or even last year, and it hasn't been touched since then, I'm sure there are things you can put on. All of you have a senior project or a capstone. That's certainly something you can put on there. If you have a poster, if you have a video you created for it, you can throw all of that on there as well. Uh, fellow employers of interest, post comments, engage alumni, join groups. It doesn't necessarily just have to be something passive where you put everything on there and then you just kind of wait to see who comes to you. By all means, be proactive, check out different interests of yours, different groups, connect with our alumni. We have an alumni mentor network as well. Um, the idea is don't sit around and wait for things to come to you. You can reach out to professionals, you can connect with them, um, and by all means, build that network. And follow Get Hired, uh, the hashtag, to get real-time information about companies that are hiring. So it is nice to stay up to date, so feel free to follow that in case you're interested and want to learn in real time. And then job search on LinkedIn. You can use all the filters and the advanced search options as well, similar to any filtering you may have done on things like Indeed, Purchase Job Score, all of these similar job search sites, um, just to play around and see what options work best for you. And then once again, the maximized LinkedIn. Can't stress it enough, it's fantastic. Um, never hurts to refresh your knowledge or even learn something new about the platform. And just to give a shameless plug, um, I, I'm sorry, I just took a quick flight to um, the Bahamas. So um, I just, <laughs> like, oh, it worked, look at that. This is where I really wanna be right now. No, it's to be with you guys first. Um, but there is a LinkedIn uh, workshop that, um, a webinar that um, I'll be doing. I think Jessica is going to be um, backing me up on that one. Um, and if you haven't started it or you just barely started your LinkedIn profile, it's more like the beginners uh, or how to refine your LinkedIn profile. We'll be doing that, I believe, on the 16th or the 17th. So just look at our events page and um, you're welcome to come to that as well. Thank you. And yes, I do recommend tuning in for the rest of our grad series. Um, a lot of good information. And you could always connect with us after too, if you can attend or if you just have additional questions as well. So I'm going to go on to the next slide. 
there we go network and engage with purpose so building and reviving your relationships so the idea is that if you had a great supervisor or a great experience and you haven't kept in touch with that person it's not a bad time to go back to professors to supervisors and say you know i really appreciated what you taught me how you were a mentor for me and i'd love to continue that connection the communication and that way you have people who want you to succeed and can teach you new things which is never a bad thing to have if you ask me uh, creating opportunities to network. So informational interviews, a wonderful term, in case you haven't heard it before. The idea is that you create an interview process with a professional, not necessarily to write an article for an assignment or anything like that. Rather, it's to learn about their profession, about their story, you know, what did they do after graduation. You get to outline your questions and you get to introduce yourself. And perhaps if things go well, that's a new mentor for you. Somebody who maybe down the line can be a recommendation or can pass you along to an offer. So again, a lot of good things from that. Uh, increase your digital presence and brand, sharing and engaging on social media. I know probably all of us do have a personal one, but you can always make that jump to make a professional account solely for that. You can engage with people conversing about the industry on Twitter. If you happen to comment to somebody and they reply, you can certainly get their contact information and continue the conversation, turn that into an informational interview. And just like that, you created a new contact in the industry. Um, also, we have finding leads on BuzzFile. BuzzFile is fantastic. Most of the time when I work with students, there are like 3,000 companies and something they're looking for. So if a student ever says, I'm not really sure where to start, usually BuzzFile is not a bad place for that. In addition to you know, any recommendations for faculty, family, friends, whoever else. And let me just jump in about BuzzFile, if you don't mind. Um, BuzzFile um, is, is something that's like this hidden secret, I think, at uh, career development, unless you've met with a counselor, sometimes students just stumble on it themselves. But this is all from the Department of Labor. You'll see um, in real time uh, what companies have hired what majors. And it's really interesting too, because if you're looking for that hidden job market and you're not really sure, okay, well, I'm interested in working for a gallery or museum, but, but I, want, I don't know all the names of the places I would reach out to and I wanna see who has actually hired people with an arts management degree or drawing and painting major, well, then I would go to um, BuzzFile and I go to arts and entertainment and I would look to see who has uh, the major, my major, and, um, and then I'll, I'll get a whole list of different uh, names, of, names of galleries and museums and other places that have hired uh, artists and in, in people with art backgrounds in, in, um, with my major in particular. Um, so you wouldn't really think to use this unless you, you knew about it, but it's an enormous amount of information. We're more than happy to show you how it works if you, um, if you talk to us during a chat or a Zoom meeting. Um, it, it's got some really good information for you to, to build up your network. Absolutely. And to jump into our alumni mentor network real quick, which I, I previously mentioned just briefly. Uh, it's a wonderful network to be able to connect with us who have graduated. I myself graduated from Purchase, so I'm on there as well, not just as a career counselor, but as somebody who went to school. Uh, I was a psychology student, so psych students, please feel free to ask me um, you know, any questions or anyone else. I'm always welcome to chat. But the idea is that you are able to connect with professionals in the industry, people who have gone through similar things such as you're currently experiencing, perhaps with some recent changes to what's going on. But the idea is you are able to ask them questions. You know, how did you use your training? Did you take this professor? You know, things like that to be able to create a common ground and understand they took their training from purchase and they launched that into their career by doing X, Y, and Z. So you can learn firsthand from people who have literally lived what you lived in some capacity. So it's always a good place to check out. Then you have affinity and industry groups, professional associations, um, and also freelancing, gigging, consulting, et cetera, as we mentioned before. Okay. There we go. So from here, um, we are kind of towards the end of our time. So we may not necessarily do the full activity, but we do have a small exercise we wanted to kind of outline. And I'll just walk you through it. And in the chat, I would appreciate it if you can type out some things for your own pitch. We'll take like half a minute. But the idea is that if you were in a situation where you're on an elevator with somebody who's your role model or hero in this industry, you look up to them, um, what would you say to them to be able to present yourself as somebody who wants to be a professional, who is a professional, and wants to grow, be a part of their organization, or whatever the case may be. So 
Here are some helpful tips. Choose your words carefully. List your highest achievements. The idea is that it's a short, like 60 second introduction. You can't tell your full story. So pick the best ones. Uh, be succinct. You want to avoid cliches. You don't want to have all this filler or fluff. Just say what you got to say, basically. Uh, practice until it sounds natural. You don't want to come off as a robot or sound like, you know, you, you scripted this. The more you practice it and rehearse, the more it sounds like it's coming from you, which honestly it is because it's your story. And then remain confident and comfortable. You know, have positive body language, smile, eye contact, all good things that make a good first impression. So if I could have um, some of you please type out uh, just a, a few things about how you would pitch yourself. That would be great. You think of that as a one minute commercial. Sometimes that's the uh, uh, clearer analogy. If you had to give a couple of uh, adjectives that describe you and maybe an example of something that describes uh, a strength, that could be included in a quote elevator pitch or a one minute commercial. So exactly. Feel free to throw out some keywords that you think might be helpful. We're not and, judging. <laughs> another uh, helpful thing you can do with your own contacts, friends, family, professors, anyone that knows you relatively well, is you can always ask them how they would describe you. And if you ask multiple people and you find that they're saying similar positive and professional characteristics and traits, then we know that relatively speaking, it's fair to say you have that. Um, so just keep in mind that that's always a helpful resource for something like this too. And just in case, if by any chance you think of your pitch later on or towards the end, you can always type it out. You can ask us questions about it as well. All right, so I'm gonna just quickly go to the next slide. All right, there we go. So job market trends, industries that are not hiring. Uh, again, as Wendy alluded to, certainly healthcare is something that's really big right now, but there are also different departments. There's even IT departments in medical centers. So by all means, keep in mind what you can contribute to, as Wendy put it, what the need is, how you can fill that need, and continue to develop a skill, you know, get a, a paid position, develop some references, whatever it is that can certainly help you out, but at the same time, be a short-term plan or an immediate action plan. A retail and food service as well, groceries, essential goods, delivery services. These are things that can be volunteering or paid positions. It's really good. It's, it's you know, giving back to your community, society, and can be a nice way to say, you know, during uh, COVID-19, I wasn't just at home watching Netflix, but I was helping make a difference in my community by X, Y, Z. That shows leadership, that shows initiative, a lot of good things, not even taking into account what that means to the industry. Uh, interpreters and translators, if you speak foreign languages and you can read and write in those, fantastic. It's a good time to use that as well. Uh, packaging and manufacturing, legal services, data analytics, IT, certainly one of the best things you can do right now being from home. Uh, web and digital marketing, you can certainly develop an online presence, communicate with their audience, their markets, their consumers, all of those wonderful things from your home as well. So these are some of the industries that are kind of booming that have a good fit for this natural, uh, or rather a natural remote phase that we're currently in. But at the same time, you can also keep in mind the other industries, such as things on Candor, some, such as things that you may find in your own research. And we are currently in a short-term and gig economy. So we do have a couple of resources here and links. Uh, resume writing tips for remote jobs. So definitely relevant to today's situation. Uh, Rye Rob, the, some of the best freelance job websites to get remote work, top 20 companies, a lot of different things. Oh, we also have Ripen, which is a new partnership um, that helps to find remote internships. So if you're ever interested in that, you can check in with us. Uh, Fiverr for being a freelancer. Uh, freelancer.com, LinkedIn Profinder. So a lot of these things essentially to help you find remote work. So that way it's not just, you know, I Googled it, but nothing really came up. So that must mean nothing is out there. No, quite the contrary. These are specialized. These are ways that you can narrow your searches, save yourself some time, and hopefully find something that you can start applying to. All right. And then... And once again, we'll be sending this out. So don't worry about writing down all these websites. You'll be able to access these links. 
some additional ones here, Bolt, Classdoor, Candid Career. Candid Career kind of falls in line with those like TED Talks. They're, they're great for industries. They have different channels. They have different things like how to interview, how to dress, um, even for online and phone interviews as well. So it, most of them are very informative. Some of them are also entertaining, but the idea is that it's new information for you. Nonprofit Westchester, Career One Stop, uh, Department of Labor Self-Employment. These are things that will help you to look for employment, help get you situated. Um, they're awesome resources and please feel free to check them out. We also have our alumni navigating your career through uh, COVID-19 on our website for additional resources as well. And let me jump in that, to say that um, you as, as a new alum, of course you have access to every service that um, current students have, um, there, we, we do not cut you off. In fact, you will have access, free access, uh, for at least the next um, two to three years. So um, hopefully you'll be gainfully employed and, and you, you won't necessarily uh, be coming back to, to us unless you want to speak on a career panel and tell us your success story, uh, which we will ask you for someday. But, um, but just know that we're still here to, to help you out. Nobody's, nobody is, um, you know, uh, our relationship just began again, you know, so if you haven't used us before, you can continue to utilize our different services, so feel free. Um, I just wanted to jump in with um, uh, a comment that um, it's um, Adelia, um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your, your name right, I'm sorry if I'm not. Um, I uh, know. Oh, there you are, hi. Do you want to read hi, your I thing? Oh, okay. Well, I was I was typing it, but I accidentally um, pressed enter, but I didn't finish. Um, but I could, uh, I guess, have what I like say what I have here. Yeah. Good. What was your your thought when you wrote it? Because I think it's a it's a really good start. Well, um, at first, what when you guys were talking about how like to pitch myself, like let's say I was in an elevator with someone, like I just said, I just randomly see like a famous researcher or something, since I'm in psychology, and I was like, okay, I have. 60 seconds we're on the first floor I, we have to get to the fifth floor um so i wanted to say first that um introduce my say my name obviously saying hi my name is adiola first i like to say that i have been inspired by your work in some other some research that i read about them and i myself have engaged in research concerning social media and memory as well as conducted uh, other research concerning um uh, I've conducted some other research concerning um, muscle memory and uh, like perception and action uh, with uh, with uh, certain objects in your daily life. And so, and then that was kind of like where I was trying to like continue my thought. Yeah, you know, I think that that's terrific. And I think that gives a good starting example of number one, you, you have to know your field and know you know, if you knew this individual or knew of them, um, or at least the, the organization that they worked for, the kind of research maybe they're involved with, um, you did your research or you've done your research to know that, um, okay, well, this is about me, but I'm, I'm relating my background to this, uh, to this individual and the uh, organization that, that they work for, the kind of research that they do. So doing your research is really, really half the battle too when you're, when you're presenting or branding yourself and you're pitching yourself in this, in this quick commercial. Um, you, you really need to know yourself and know how your background relates or maybe a couple of, couple of little tips, a couple of strengths that you wanna share um, that might pique the interest of the organization. So I think that was a, that was a really good start. Thank, Thank you for you. sharing that, <laughs> definitely. And we can do um, one thing that we didn't really touch on in this workshop, but um, Jessica will be running an interview skill uh, workshop soon. We have, um, an on, we have a virtual interviewing uh, program platform called Interview Stream. If you haven't used that, that can help you with mock interviews, but we can also help you with mock interviews in practice. So you're actually learning, well, how do I pitch myself in a real interview or a virtual interview? And we will do those kinds of, um, uh, help you polish things up before you get the interview. So first things first, we gotta help you get the, uh, get the, you right. know, get the interviews <laughs> and, and reach out, so. Absolutely, and then just to add on to that, um, for the finisher, and this is for all of you as well as you start to develop your own pitch, uh, keep in mind that you don't just want it to be a good first impression, and, and you can certainly accomplish that, but what can that lead up to as well? So with your closer, um, some of the statements you want, might wanna 
keep in mind or a question or an invitation to connect, asking for that contact information. But at the same time, you don't just want to say your name and then give me your email, basically. So you got to have a nice balance of everything just to keep in mind. But if you ever want to work on that or run it by us, we can always practice with you and give you feedback as well. Definitely. Definitely. All right. And then uh, we have another uh, positive quote by Albert Einstein. In the middle of every difficulty lies opportunity. Um, certainly, this is a time where grit and persistence is going to be a very valuable personal trait for you to either work on or to really cling to in terms of something that's gotten you this far. So you can certainly keep going. Um, the idea is that there are still jobs available. The world will continue you know, once this phase of COVID-19 passes, and then at the same time, you don't want to be in a plateau, you don't want to be stagnant, you want to continue and go ahead, you want to be more marketable. So all of the things we listed out that you have access to from the slides uh, will help you to do so. You can pick and choose at your own pace, of course. Um, don't take this as like, everybody has to check out webinars, everybody has to do this. Not at all, but certainly it will help you to be competitive, to stand out from other applicants, and it's never a bad idea, so. Yeah. And it's, it's um, another word that will come to mind that you'll hear over and over again as the graduating class of 2020 is the word resiliency, that you will need to be and you already are extremely resilient and creative, um, that those, those qualities you will use in an interview when they ask, well, what are some of your greatest strengths? And you can tell them the kinds of strengths that you developed and you've refined um, during this time when you were asked to quickly leave campus, get home, start uh, you know, finishing your classes, communicate with faculty and people in, in this two-dimensional way that you weren't necessarily used to. Um, you had to be resilient and some of us adjusted better to it than others some of it are some of us are still adjusting to it but um but we got to do what we got to do because we're trying to to be safe for ourselves and for our families um this too shall pass as they as they say um it it is going to get better um it's it's um you you are in a in a tough uh job market but uh, there are have been other tough job markets. You're gonna you're gonna get through this. So make the most of your time, and um, know that there's people here to help you. Know that there's a lot of support, and we have a lot of you know access to resources and contacts. We are more than help happy to help you out. So feel free to to shoot us an email and say I really would like to meet with somebody. Meet with me or Jeff. Uh, Jessica's available as well. Um, quick questions, chat, or, or Zoom uh, career coaching, we're more than happy to, to do that. Um, use our website. You know, maybe you never had a chance to use it before or use any of these tools we've been talking about. Now is a good time to, to get started. Um, you know, take the plunge and, and we'll be glad to help you uh, with the first steps. So should we open up to questions? Yes, uh, the last thing I just wanna add, as Wendy mentioned, we do have Zoom walk-in hours. We also have live chat hours on Purchase Job Score. And just so you know, as graduates, um, you will have access to Purchase Job Score, even if let's say your purchase email expires, if you ever wanna change it, we can do that for you for one of your professional emails. So you will always be able to access Purchase Job Score and see what jobs and internships are there for you. And now we can turn it to questions. Okay. Now, do they have to be on chat or can they just jump in and talk? Um, what I would say for the voice, uh, if they can just put their hands and then we'll just um, call out to them and then they can unmute and say it. Otherwise, they can type in the chat and we'll just Oh, we do have a question from, from Kanasia Moore. Um, is there any tips or advice for someone who has no work experience? Well, that's, you know, yes, definitely. Um, you may think that you have no, like what do you have to offer? What are you gonna put on your resume if you have very limited work experience or you didn't have a chance to get an internship um, because you were, um, you were working hard or you're in a conservatory or you uh, were taking classes. There are things that you can put on your resume. You can emphasize projects perhaps that you did in classes or uh, performances. Um, are you there? Can you, can you speak to us, um, Kanasia? Um, and just let us know what uh, what was your major and your general background. 
Can we unmute you? No? Hello? Okay, so unable to get on the mic, which is okay. So as mentioned, okay. Okay. you can always contact us if you wanted to maybe set up an appointment for this or discuss more. Okay. But uh, as Wendy mentioned, or some general kind of advice for everybody in this sense, our recommendations would be that uh, keep in mind, as, as Wendy mentioned, what does work experience, what is that comprised of? Because if it's just having things you've done um, in a certain type of role, most, if not all of us, have done some kind of childcare, looking after siblings, looking after the neighborhood children. So almost everyone can put some type of childcare on their resume if they really have uh, very little things to pick and choose from. But also your academics. You know, if you're a TA, if you're an RA, you know, if you did tutoring, these are certainly things that are experience, whether they were paid or not. Volunteer experience is always wonderful. And just in case, if the well is a little dry, so to speak, in terms of what you can draw from don't be afraid to use this time to get that experience, to be involved in something, whether it's volunteering, whether it's one of these part-time or kind of like filler jobs, things to flesh out your resume, put on your LinkedIn, yeah. get recommendations. So it's not necessarily a bad time to be able to say, you know, I haven't really done much. I have like a really good GPA, but now I need to get that experience. So yeah. feel free to, to start that process and we can help you with that. And there are people who do postgraduate internships, you know, in, in a, any economy, people do that too, because maybe they're trying to break into um, a specific field and they haven't had a chance to get an internship in that field. Um, so this is a time where they're starting to build their um, resume with some new experiences. Sometimes, you know, there are folks who do, well, you know what, to get my foot in the door, I'm going to, I'm going to pitch an idea. I'm going to, I'm going to do a, an illustration for, um, for this organization and I'm interested in, in getting something published. I'm going to write something for, for um, uh, you know, this um, media company um, because it looks like this would be something that they would be interested in seeing. Um, let me try it. You know? And I'm not saying to work for free or you know, uh, do a lot of that because you probably, you know, many people can't afford to do that. But, um, but you know, keep an open mind about the way you can uh, gain those experiences. And I'll be, and you'd be surprised, you know, every time I talk to somebody who says, I have absolutely no experience, I don't know what to put on my resume, and we do a, we have a nice uh, coaching session with them, we always find things that, that could be added to the resume and strengths that you may have from your courses or your classes um, or other kinds of activities you've been involved in. We can help you with that. Other questions? Of course. And thank you for the question. Quiet. Um, Adiola raised her hand. Was this from before? Oh, Adiola, you can unmute yourself and ask your okay. question. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So I, I just, I, I just raised my hand. So you mentioned before about postgraduate uh, work, and so I'm graduating actually in December 2020 instead of uh, I didn't like graduate just now, okay. but um, since I, since we, I'm still part of this uh, market where there's still uncertainty and there's still like a lot of job loss and you know opportunities that are. Are there. Um, so for me, I'm a psychology major. Do you have any, um, like, I guess, I suppose, like, postgraduate, like, internships or, like, uh, resources that I can use so that I can, like, start, like, looking now? I can jump in first, and, and then, Wendy, if you want to piggyback off. Sure. But uh, the idea there is that that is a wonderful question, and certainly while you are still a student, I would say keeping in mind what you can commit to for starters, because if you're finishing your senior project, that certainly is something you don't want to ignore either and just kind of jump on and try to take on a bunch of new uh, positions. So certainly be honest with yourself how much you can commit to in terms of time, your scheduling. But aside from that, depending on what you want to do with psychology, if you want to go into research, there are many lab settings that are looking for summer research uh, assistance. Um, certainly I've worked with some. 
students that are applying to those, what that looks like for your cover letter, for your interviewing, you know, what kind of skills you can market. So certainly it's fair to say you probably have relatively good JASP skills at this point. So if you feel strong about those, we can talk about what you're doing on your senior project, you know, the research you've been involved with from junior seminar. Um, but let's say you want to go into clinical psychology, seeing what resources are available, um, what populations you want to work with to get experience from that. Um, it can be a little bit tricky at the undergraduate level because you can't necessarily be in confidential situations right. or settings. But at the same time, there are things that you can be involved with, like, um, let's say, shadowing or assisting in different departments of that clinic to still be at the heart with different professionals, see them in their daily, learn their terminology, their lingo, and, you know, be a part of these type of experiences in whatever capacity that looks like for an undergraduate. And let's say, for example, if you want to do more counseling or social work, Mm -hmm. There's certainly a lot of community opportunities and volunteering that can help you to be involved with, again, some of the populations you want to be a part of, some of, let's say, um, the advocacy for social justice, things like that, that mm -hmm. really are important to you and maybe will lead you to a career down the line. So there's a lot of ways to be involved. Um, I would say you can do that certainly over the summer now. You can do that during the fall semester and you can do that after graduation. But mm -hmm. currently, as you're still a student for fall, I would just say um, don't be necessarily in a rush to get all that experience you can certainly do it while you're studying applied um, your senior project is also a type of applied learning so just in case if you haven't had enough of that and this goes for everyone throw that on your resume. It's a great conversation piece during an interview as well, because you have to use time management skills. You have to work with deadlines. Uh, you have to work under your supervisor, in this case, a faculty member, uh, come up with different drafts. You have to present it as well. So that's public speaking skills. So a lot of good things from that while you look for additional opportunities. Yeah, and, and um, that's, all, that's definitely um, helpful. And I think that's good things to think about for, for a psychology or social science major as well um but also uh, just just in terms of what's open now you know if we're talking about what are the job opportunities um mental health counseling um although you won't have the qualifications yet there may be um there may be paraprofessional opportunities that that are out there so look at those current opportunities for um, nonprofit organizations and um, in some of the mental health counseling areas, because there may be an advocacy or an intake counselor or something that, or caseworker or something that you might uh, experience that uh, training in um, that could be a foot in the door. Um, also, for f folks who are not really sure what they're doing this summer and they then they want to have you know um, a, a day a day job and see what's what's going on and you haven't had enough being a camp counselor. Just just heard that uh, Governor Cuomo said that the 29th of June, they're opening up the camps again. So they're not sleep away camps, but if for people who are interested in working in day camp in some capacity, um, I'm not saying you all wanna do that. Um, I did it, I love doing it, but that was my thing. Um, it depends on, on your interest if you like working with kids or youth, but uh, camps will be opening, which means that if they haven't had all their hiring, they were supposed to come to our campus among uh, other employers and didn't um, because they couldn't. Um, now they'll be looking again to hire, so they may have to do a lot of quick interviewing and hiring. So just keep that in mind. There's, as more things open up, there will be more opportunities. Um, but I just, I just knew about that because I just heard that was happening. So we're doing another outreach to be sure um, that we have those jobs listed and purchase job score if they are still um, looking or are looking again. So, and, and make sure that you set a search agent on purchase job score because in, in the industries or in the areas like when you want to be alerted to any open job, something that just came in, you make, and whether it's virtual or face to face, or it may start out as virtual and then come go into in person a little bit later in the fall. Uh, keep your eyes open for those things because they're, they're posted regularly on purchase job score as well. Um, there's also another feature of Purchase Job Score that you may not know about that's specifically for experienced people or alumni. Um, you can still use the regular system, but, um, but you'll see it. It's called Extended Search. Is that what it's called now, Jeff? 
uh, expanded I search, I think. I believe so, yeah. Yeah, so when you go into Job Score and you click and you see Purchase Job Score right above it or below it, it says expanded search and you can type in the, your zip code of where you live. Let's say you live in Bronx, so you type in your zip code and then it'll, sh uh, and then your, um, the job titles you're thinking about or some keywords and you'll, um, you'll see a whole bunch of other uh, job listings in your um, region. Maybe you want a national job and you, you can just put in, okay, patient advocate and then get listings of um, all of the patient advocate jobs nationally if you want. I mean, that's too big a search, but just so you know, you can do that kind of search as well beyond the purchase job score um, site which is helpful. I just want to add um, one, one final thought that I don't think we covered previously in our presentation today, but it's very important to keep in mind. Um, the silver lining of now we're virtual is that many different positions are available, not just around the state, but also across all of the states. So you can do an internship, technically speaking, from California, while still in New York in your bedroom or from your kitchen or wherever it may be. So keep in mind that you can certainly expand your search filters to go into other states and see what they're interested in. Some of them may have like, you need to be from our state or we're going to go face to face once things are approved. So just keep that in mind. But ultimately, this is a time to be able to do internships in other states without having to go and like live there or like take a flight and, you know, stay in a place over the summer. So, so just keep that in mind. Okay. Well, if there are no other questions, we might have to say goodbye. I wish I had seen you all face to face. We would have had snacks in the office, you know, it would have been just like old times of career development, but, but this uh, day will come again and we will have you visit. And when you, when you are gainfully employed or you are in graduate program, you want to talk about your experience, We'll have you back and you'll visit Purchase when things are even better, um, certainly will be better than they are now. So yeah. feel free to connect with us. Thanks for coming, guys. Thank you. Keep in touch and best of luck to all, the, to all of you. Stay healthy and hopefully we hear from you. Thank you.